We have been looking into the design applications using FPGA board and uh, we also need uh, uh, different cards such as uh, digital input output card in order to um, uh, increase the resources. Um, uh, uh, for example, uh, we need uh, the features of uh, digital input output card are as follows. This is the card that we are going to use uh, in addition to the uh, IOs uh, that are um, on the uh, FPGA board. And uh, the first feature is uh, it has um, a total number of 48 discrete inputs and outputs and uh, each of these inputs outputs can be configured by the user and therefore, it is called uh, user selected. And uh, in addition to this we have 4 push button switches and uh, each of which is uh, hardware debounce. We use uh, 7400 NAND gate for uh, debouncing, the circuit uh, this is right there on the board. And uh, we also have uh, 8 numbers of 4 bit binary switches and um, 8 numbers of uh, BCD switches and uh, this is very handy if you want to straight away uh, uh, um, uh, select um, in um, uh, decimal values. For example, 0 through 9 are graduated on the BCD switches and uh, you can uh, uh, be at home with um, decimal settings and uh, if you still insist on a binary setting you can use this one. In fact, all these 8 and uh, 8 uh, BC, uh, binary and BCD switches are in parallel. You can uh, select one uh, one of the two, either the, uh, bi one binary switch or uh, one uh, BCD switch which is connected in parallel. And in any combinations, uh, I mean you can uh, select them. In uh, addition to this, we also have outputs and we have some uh, 7 segment LEDs, 6 numbers of them and uh, in, uh, it is uh, it has a right dis, uh, decimal point uh, display which is not available in the FPGA board which we have already seen earlier. And in addition to the 7 segment LEDs we have uh, 16 numbers of uh, discrete LEDs and, uh, and these are all the LEDs that we are going to use in the first application namely the traffic controller. And uh, this will be the very last of the uh, 6 uh, 7 segment LEDs and uh, the 7 segment LEDs and uh, discrete LEDs are once again in parallel. Uh, uh, this is parallel in uh, as far as the last two seven segment LEDs are concerned and uh, the whole board works on a single supply namely plus 5 volts. And uh, we will have a look at the uh, uh, layout of the uh, IO card. This is the IO card we see here. This card has um, a connector which is 50 pin uh, position 
and uh, a bug stick uh, male has been put on this board and naturally you need a female FRC connector to mate with this and uh, interconnect it to the uh, FPGA board uh, on the uh, expansion headers. We have two expansion headers if you remember it right and uh, the cable will have to be um, bifurcated and then uh, connected to the two expansion uh, headers and since uh, this is only a single connector at this end and uh, we need to supply, I mean supply um, uh, plus 5 volts uh, which is done through this, uh, this is a male connector on the board, this is called a Molex connector and uh, normally this is popular for uh, connecting uh, power supplies and uh, first two pins are plus 5 volt and next two pins are uh, ground volt and uh, we also have some 3.3 volt provision here and also some uh, crystal oscillator uh, some two or three oscillators can be connected on the board which is not shown here because for this particular application uh, we are not going to use them and uh, in addition to this we have um, a push button switches that is uh, four numbers of them and uh, this is a push button shown here and uh, you also have some four jumpers here and if you install the jumper on the left right now it is shown as uh, right install jumper on the left if you install uh, it will uh, automatically select this push button switch and uh, uh, it is debounced by using 74LS00 and uh, you need uh, cross coupled uh, NAND gates which we will be covering la later on and uh, out comes the uh, debounced uh, uh, digital value which is connected to pin number uh, 3 here. So, this is the point which we are uh, we will have to connect and uh, second push button is connected to uh, uh, pin number 4 and uh, pin number uh, 5, pin number 6 respectively for PB3 and PB4 and in this fashion all these uh, switches you have you see some more switches here all of them are connected in the very same order um, uh, left to right I mean like a uh, rest scan order you can say and uh, we have uh, uh, parallel to these 4 bits we have a switch S SW1 which is a binary switch and there will be naturally 4 uh, 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 discrete switches and uh, the leftmost of the switch is uh, parallel to this switch here and the second one is uh, parallel to this third parallel to third uh, position and fourth one to parallel to the uh, PB4 and uh, in parallel to this uh, switch 1 is the BCD switch which is uh, SW5 and uh, this is graduated as I mentioned earlier from 0 through 9 and you can use uh, either um, the push button switch or this uh, DIP switch for a binary setting or the uh, BCD switch for the decimal setting and uh, all these are uh, BCD switches 4 numbers here and 4 numbers here down all symmetrical it is very easy to find and similarly uh, SW9 through SW12 just as SW1 to SW4 is also a uh, group of binary switches 4 of them here and uh, totally you have each uh, being 4 bits uh, in order to have catered to 8 numbers you need 32 bits. So, these 32 bits are connected in exactly the same order that you see uh, in this fashion first all these 4 and which is parallel to this this 4 and then uh, after this so SW4 is connected to uh, SW9 again in the same order once again SW13 is parallel to SW9 and so on and SW16 is parallel to SW12 and this completes all the uh, inputs and uh, they would uh, naturally take 32 bits uh, and uh, they are connected right starting from pin number 3 and uh, counting 32 you will get uh, land up somewhere here and uh, you can keep track of how many pins it is. It is exactly in the same order that uh, we have seen the switch uh, positioned here. In addition to this we also have connected to the very same pins uh, also this um, 7 segment LEDs. In fact, uh, this very first uh, there are if you notice there are 7 I mean 6 uh, 7 segment uh, LEDs what is not shown in this figure is a decimal point, but we will be seeing that separately when we have a zoomed version later on and uh, that would mean 7 segment plus 1 for decimal point would take you 8 bits and uh, once again this is connected from uh, pin number 3 as it is in the case of push button switch or SW1 or SW5 and uh, the order in which this is connected is A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then decimal point in that order starting from the left for, for instance segment A is connected to pin number 3, segment B to pin number 4 and so on and uh, after you have exhausted all the pins for uh, this uh, 7 segment which is uh, 8 number and uh, very uh, A segment for the second uh, 
S 7 S 2 will uh, be connected uh, next to that immediately next to that and so on in the same very same order you will have totally. So, if you see 6 7 segment uh, display you have actually 6 into 8 including decimal point that means 48 input I mean uh, outputs are available here. And uh, if you notice this we have a 50 pin connector of which we need uh, for VCC ground that is plus 5 volt is connected to pin number 1 and um, uh, pin number 2 is ground am I right in this and uh, pin number 3 starts with this uh, uh, segment A and it goes and uh, until the very end 50. So, you can see that one di uh, difference is uh, 2 if you knock them off uh, what you have is 50 minus 2 48 and uh, that is precisely what you have here. So, 6 into 8 is 48 and the very same order. In addition to this we also have discrete LEDs 16 of them for example, this uh, row you can see marked as LED 1 to LED 1, LED 2 and so on right up to LED 8 and uh, here starts LED 9 through uh, LED 16 and uh, the first row LED 1 to LED 8 is connected in parallel to uh, the last but one 7 segment that is S 5, 7 S 5 is connected to uh, this one in parallel that uh, the LED 1 is connected to segment A, B segment is connected to LED 2 and so on and right up to that. So, is the case for uh, 7 uh, segment S 6 and uh, A is connected once again to LED 9, B connected to LED 10 and so on and uh, decimal point will be naturally connected to LED 16. And uh, these are all the resources that you need in order to uh, do any considerable amount of uh, uh, application that you wish to have and which is not adequate uh, I mean the resources on the FPG board is clearly not adequate for this purpose. And, uh, So, next what we will do is we will just have a look at the circuitry uh, on the board. What we have here is a push button debouncing circuit and uh, this is a traditional uh, NAND gate used instead of NAND gates you can also use a NOR gate and uh, note that uh, cross coupling is here. For example, Q bar is this output and Q is this uh, top output and Q is connected as the input for the next uh, NAND gate and uh, this output Q bar is connected to the uh, uh, first NAND gate input here this is a cross coupling this is a traditional cross coupling and uh, the two other inputs of the NAND gate are this here connected to the push button switch one of them is connected to normally open connection and uh, other is connected to the normally closed connection. Note that uh, to start with when you do not push any uh, push button and uh, it will be returned to the ground that is this signal is forced to ground here and notice also two pull up resistors used here for a pull up resistor a typical value is uh, used is 4.7 k or 10 k normally these are all the industry standards. And uh, uh, if you use a higher value naturally you cannot guarantee the uh, uh, threshold level coming uh, it may be right at the uh, uh, so called uh, high or low will be at uh, uh, threshold level. And, uh, you so, you uh, avoid going for very high values do not go for uh, mega ohms region as far as the pull up resistor is concerned. And a typical value as I mentioned is around 4.7 k, 10 k this has been uh, proven in industries all over the globe. And uh, naturally if you uh, put um, smaller resistor and uh, more circuitries I mean similar circuitries involved current consumption also will be more. So, accordingly you can limit uh, this one by uh, selecting 10 k or uh, do not go beyond that uh, 10 k and uh, uh, that is the price you may have to uh, pay for. Otherwise, you will get into uh, trouble as far as the I mean uh, noise performance as well as the uh, uh, level uh, of uh, 0 and 1's uh, level will also give a problem. And uh, so, to start with uh, let us see how this circuit works and uh, uh, to start with this one is in 1 because it is pulled high and this is forced to 0. So, you know that uh, 0 into anything is 0 here. So, just before the bubble of the uh, NAND gate you get only 0 here and uh, after the bubble you get 1. So, Q bar is 1 for this particular uh, position of the push button that you have seen here. And uh, let us see uh, what is the case this Q bar is connected as the input uh, just remember it is 1 here and this is pulled high. So, 1 into 1 is 1 before the bubble and uh, after the bubble it is uh, 0 that means say it is uh, 0 and 1 here. Therefore, we have used the notation q and q bar because if it is 0 it will be 1 and if it is 1 it will be 0 
and uh, right now it is uh, when the push button is not pressed you get an output of 0 it is this where we are I mean we are going to take it as an output and uh, now let us see what happens when you press the button push button. So, this connection is uh, broken so uh, it is uh, it is going to travel all the way and uh, strike at this point before that what happens let us have a look because the connection is broken here this one which was uh, forced to 0 will be 1 and uh, because this is not yet connected to this ground so that is also 1. So, 1 1 would uh, mean a store mode in an SR flip flop and that is precisely we are um, exploiting here and uh, remember it was 0 and 1. So, this 1 was fed here and 1 into this is still 1 only 1 into 1 is naturally it is 0. So, uh, that is how the store mode is working. So, uh, so in between uh, it is always in a store mode and here also you can analyze here because it is 1 here and um, uh, q was 0 there. So, it is uh, naturally 1 here. So, 0 and 1 are uh, preserved that is it is in a store mode and now let us see when this uh, button I mean uh, this uh, contact is made here uh, this is forced to 0 for the time being. So, once this is 0 this will be 0 here therefore, 1 here. So, the q output has gone 1 Ob obviously I do not have to analyze this one and uh, because this will be inversion of this. So, it has gone to 1 and this is gone to 0. Now, what happens? Uh, when you I mean the um, switch strikes here it will bounce back because of um, elasticity in uh, any uh, 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 contactor any contact that you have if you make it will uh, bounce back. So, and uh, this keeps on going for a while uh, before it settles down it will settle down because you are applying pressure to that and uh, so the, um, before that it will keep on making a number of uh, makes and breaks here. So, even during uh, when it uh, when it is made uh, 0 here we have already seen it is 1. So, uh, the very first time we had has made a contact even if it bounces back it is in store mode therefore, 1 is still preserved and that is how it is uh, debouncing the circuit debounces very I mean in a very simple manner. And uh, so, after the like this we have uh, 4 push button switches and uh, uh, naturally and uh, each uh, ls not not will have two packages i mean two such gates and uh, we need two such ls 0 0 that's the reason why we saw in the uh, block, i mean layout earlier two number of ices for uh, four push button switches so here for a binary switch there are basically discrete switches here 1 2 4 and they are all grounded here and there are all other end of the switches um, uh, returned to the io pins in the order that we have already discussed and each of them are pulled high by the resistor array. So, is the case for a BCD switch they are also uh, resistor array in fact, uh, this resistor array and this are same because all the switches are in parallel and uh, uh, an on of a particular input uh, switch input will return to 0 for obvious uh, condition here. So, it is grounded here and this will be pulled low and uh, this is how you uh, make a binary setting and a BCD switch also similar to that except that some inversion is involved. For example, if you want to if you put set 0 on the BCD switch and the BCD switch is gra um, graduated from 0 1 2 3 right uh, up to 9. So, that you can take a small screwdriver and turn that to any desired position thereby you can have a BCD or decimal setting. And uh, uh, this one notice that one uh, for 0 you will be reading all ones that means, all the switches will be off. So, uh, all ones are read because of the pull up resistor here resistor array and uh, if it is 9 it will actu actually be reading 0 1 1 0 because it will make a contact uh, corresponding to 1 0 0 1 that is the usual uh, thing you can see 1 0 0 1 means making a contact is 1 here. So, but in, uh, in terms of logic it will be inversion because of this uh, configuration. So, that is the reason why it is inverted here and uh, this one you can you know that it is nothing but a 8421 code. So, one, one can easily derive uh, what you had to put here only remember to invert this way. These conditions are required if you are to uh, recode and uh, which may be given as an assignment towards the end. So, now coming to this a 7 segment LED is shown here and the segments are all A B C D E F this is the last one and in addition to that a decimal point is also there and the center one is the G and uh, typical circuit driving circuit for this uh, um, each of these LEDs uh, for that matter even the discrete LED is uh, quite simple. You have a 74 LS 05 and uh, 
that input is once again connected from the uh, IO pin that we have already seen 48 uh, of them and uh, this is once again pulled high by a pull up resistor there and uh, when it is not connected one will be pumped in here uh, because of the uh, this is a open collector output here and uh, thereby it can uh, sink current and uh, LED is connected in this fashion uh, and uh, LED that 7 segment LED we are going to use uh, we have used on the board is uh, common anode type that is why for uh, all the 7 segment are uh, uh, combined together as far as the common anode is concerned and like that and uh, when it uh, when it is 1 here it will be 0 here and this is the current limiting resistor and uh, naturally LE will conduct and a typical uh, resistance is around uh, 200 ohms which you can easily find uh, con conducting LED will take about uh, 1.5 volt and uh, this will be 0.3 volt with reference to ground that means 1.8 volt drop is accounted from plus 5 volt supply the difference is um, uh, going to be uh, appearing across R and uh, it just allow for some 10 milliamps to 20 milliamps say a typical 10 milliamps is enough to light up the LED. We have this uh, some of these FPGA boards which will be showing one of the FPGA boards especially uh, based on XC 4000 series. There are uh, problem associated with this, this is a practical problem which we have experienced in the course of development of uh, different applications and uh, this the problem is uh, FPGA boards using XC 4000 series malfunction if input switches are connected permanently. See we have already seen that in digital I O uh, we have directly connected the switches and uh, that is to be used with the uh, FPGA board XCV uh, uh, XSV 800 that is using XCV um, 800 um, uh, type of FPGA and uh, with that there is uh, this problem is not uh, uh, encountered and uh, this problem is there only in the XC 4000 type uh, series and uh, the way to overcome this problem is by using on chip tri state buffers as shown below. So, this uh, tri state buffers there are uh, uh, you can for example, this is the FPGA input pin there you may be connecting to the external I mean uh, here uh, a DAP switch in such a case if you do not use this tri state buffer and straight away connect to the FPGA pin and uh, when you switch on and uh, uh, download the bit stream uh, and the system really goes mad it does not function in, in, so it malfunctions and in order to overcome that one we, uh, we have to either use an external uh, tri state buffer or a better thing would be to use the uh, on board uh, resources and uh, in, uh, if you do this configuration and uh, the corresponding Verilog code for the same is given here and it is a very sm simple uh, Verilog code and uh, this is the module declaration and uh, A and B are what we have already seen and enable is the enable for this and uh, this uh, of course, it is bigger here you can remove this actually it is enable the and uh, this is when enable is on then uh, A will be uh, communicated to B and uh, uh, A is I mean uh, will be connected to a, D a DAP switch or a BCD switch and uh, thereby uh, uh, actually connecting it to the FPGA pin after the tri state buffer and uh, the code for this one is once again input output declaration is here and we have put only just 4 bits here for uh, as many number of bits that you require you will have to put and for a 4 bit binary switch 4 is enough uh, if you have multiple accordingly you have to increase this instead of 3 may, uh, as many numbers as you want and uh, we are going to use only the assigned statements therefore and uh, they are declared as wire here and uh, there are I mean simple 2 instruction will do the trick. So, for example, we uh, enable first here and um, in con concurrent statement is another uh, uh, mux here this is the output assigned uh, output I mean uh, B is derived from either the actual uh, DAP switch which is connected to the input or it is forced with 0. It is forced with 0 if enable is uh, it is in disable mode that is enable is 0 uh, naturally 0 will be forced onto B this is at the time of uh, configuring when you configure the bit stream this is the case normally because when you switch on and um, all the FPGA pins are uh, normally cleared and therefore, we have returned this way and this particular uh, code simple just 2 codes in essence will uh, very easily solve the problem which we have explained earlier and that is the end mod. We have seen this 4000 uh, series board uh, uh, wherein uh, problem is encountered this board is shown here and this is the uh, Xilinx chip 
this is actually uh, XC 4000 ton and uh, associated with this problem we have already seen analyzed and then seen how to solve the problem. So, next is we will see the traffic controller uh, a demo of the uh, using different uh, boards that we have already considered namely the FPGA board as well as uh, uh, um, uh, digital IO card and uh, herein uh, we have uh, we need to connect this um, uh, FPGA card to a parallel port that is shown here and this is the parallel port connection and he from here it is uh, it trails there and then gets connected to the FPGA board and right on the top here and uh, this is the connection there and uh, this is the FPGA board and uh, a zoomed version is uh, available uh, right now. So, you can see this uh, different uh, the main uh, FPGA uh, is here and uh, this is uh, XCV 800 uh, device. We have also already seen uh, description of all the other things and this are all the uh, flat cable connection uh, expander and this cables are connected to the uh, digital I O card which is next here right here and a zoom version you can have a look and this uh, that cable connection is right here and uh, this what we have already seen 50 pin connection and uh, this is the BCD switch it is graduated 0, 1, 2, 3, 9 and so on like this 8 such uh, provision are available and 8 uh, DIP switches are available push button switches are here and uh, now we will see uh, the working of the uh, traffic controller uh, right now it is on and uh, you can see the um, uh, traffic controller board here and uh, the zoomed version is here and uh, you just have a look at uh, some of the pa part of the sequence for a while. The traffic controller uh, bitstream is uh, loaded by using GXS load here and we have already seen this in the manual earlier covered earlier this is the board type XSV 800 selected here and it uh, the connection is a LPT 1 parallel port and that is what is put here and uh, the bit stream that you need uh, uh, for example, traffic uh, underscore controller which is actually a dot bit and uh, we have to uh, uh, get this in this uh, field uh, by merely uh, copying and dragging from the folder in which it is uh, available and uh, this is what we have already seen in the previous design in a traffic controller and uh, once you have got the uh, desired file on this you have to load that. So, this is done by pressing this uh, right side one button is there now watch what happens while doing the load. So, you see another small window open down and it is actually loading the bit stream here if you see the traffic controller dot bit immediately what did you see here and it has been in, uh, it has initialized uh, the uh, display traffic controller display starting with the, this is the main road. We, uh, right from here left to right and uh, what you saw was a green transiting uh, to yellow there and um, this is this uh, vertical road is the side road and uh, you can see the entire sequence and uh, earlier in the design we have used uh, for uh, uh, main uh, road 45 seconds uh, green and uh, this has been um, uh, uh, lowered to 15 seconds in order to uh, get a good demo here and uh, you can probably keep track of how much time it actually takes each of them and then make sure that they are really working and uh, this will be there in one of the corners all the time that we are going to cover. Now, uh, let us see uh, what we have in the traffic controller and um, uh, the point here is so this is the traffic controller which we are already familiar and um, I am not going through the um, uh, detailed uh, description of the uh, Verilog code which we have already seen earlier and uh, what all we have done here in this is added some more uh, features uh, namely pedestrian crossing which was given as an assignment earlier is actually uh, um, put in this code and uh, this is not uh, in the demo that you are seeing and uh, of course, uh, blink, blink control is also there uh, in the uh, one minute. While running through the normal sequence of the traffic lights, so uh, you have also the provision for uh, uh, pressing a uh, blink control and uh, PB1 through PB4 that you see is uh, I mean uh, one of that is used namely PB1. If I press this one you just watch what happens to the display and you can see that it is uh, blinking all the yellow lights are blinking as long as uh, this is switched on 
this is uh, equivalent to switching on um, uh, during the nights um, uh, I mean, uh, blinking of the lights during uh, night for um, uh, uh, I mean cautious driving and uh, when you release it reverts back to the f very first sequence that you see there. We will see the traffic light controller code amended for uh, catering to uh, blinking uh, covered in every state instead of uh, just one state what we have covered earlier and uh, that is one change that uh, has been incorporated in this uh, revised uh, traffic controller design and uh, in addition to this uh, we had given a uh, assignment for pedestrian crossing that also has been incorporated in this and uh, so this is what is here for uh, this control the traffic lights have a four road junction with pedestrian crossing and uh, uh, we had earlier 45 seconds for the main road traffic which has been amended now for 15 seconds and side road for 10 seconds and other things are same for namely the yellow lights for 5 seconds and uh, blinking at uh, 1 second rate and this is what we have already seen this is the road here. Uh, before that let us have a look at the powerpoint presentation for the same with the amended uh, code. So, to start with right on uh, what we have is the straight flowing traffic with the MG1 green, MG2 green and uh, while this happens we can also allow the pedestrian to cross over here namely PS stands for the pedestrian uh, uh, signal and uh, 1 and 2 the same nomenclature we have adopted earlier 1 for this side road and uh, this for uh, 2 for uh, other side of the side road and S stands for the side road and uh, you have uh, this signal here uh, which is on and uh, when this happens, I mean uh, next uh, sequence is uh, it converts it into yellow, w when that happens we have uh, removed the pedestrian crossing because it is much safer before the oncoming traffic uh, which is in S2 here which happens to be the left turn as well as the right turn here and uh, corresponding signals are all lit here and um, we have now uh, left turn this is an extra addition here and this was already there right. And, uh, and next one is once again it will go through the uh, yellow as far as um, main traffic is concerned and uh, that is S3 sequence and in S4 sequence the reverse for the same main road happens and that is uh, right and left traffic is allowed here in this case and once again you can see the left uh, um, indicator here and uh, once again goes through the yellow sequence in which case SY1, SY2 are um, on here. In order, um, because it is going to be uh, green in the next uh, sequence that is uh, SG1 as well as SG2 and uh, that is why we provided this. In case you are not happy you are free to change because it is a question of uh, changing few verilog codes and, uh, and next one uh, here you can see that uh, main pedestrian crossing is uh, lit here the signal is lit here allowing the pedestrian to cross because this is going to be uh, straight traffic. And, um, in addition to this left we can also provide here in fact uh, this is nothing but uh, the same thing we can uh, duplicate here also if you want this crossing you do not need any extra signal as such for that and uh, next is once again an yellow traffic uh, transition here and uh, after this we have um, SI sequence which will be um, the, uh, the same case for uh, left and right um, traffic. Uh, from the side roads, side road 1 is allowed here and once again um, yellow transition and in this case it is only uh, yellow for this is given because next is going to be on this side, uh, right traffic as well as left uh, traffic flow as far as the um, uh, side 2 is concerned and uh, all other things I do not have to explain here, uh, they are naturally red and whatever is to be done it has been done. And uh, as far as this is concerned both left flow as well as right traffic signal must be on and once again they, it goes through the yellow and in this sequence and uh, next is uh, going to be the very first actually uh, next is going to be the very first sequence here, here and, uh, and that is the reason why yellow has been marked for the uh, main here and uh, also uh, S12 gives the blinking. Earlier it was uh, if I remember correctly it was S8 state and uh, now it is uh, S12 state because we have added some more states in between and instead of um, uh, 8 plus 1 9 states were there earlier I think 
and uh, here uh, it happens to be uh, is it starting from S naught? S naught to S11 is a normal sequence that is 12 sequences plus one more sequence here for the uh, blinking. So, reverting back to the code. So, these are all precisely the same definitions etcetera we are not going to repeat the thing. So, wherever that is a change we are going to cover that and uh, we had a time base uh, for uh, 40 megahertz earlier if I am remember correct. Now, what we have is 50 megahertz because this is what is demanded by the access board and as I mentioned earlier there was a divisor which we uh, programmed um, and that was uh, in terms of 1, 2, 3 and so on and we had uh, put a divisor of uh, 2 that means, uh, we can uh, we get from 100 megahertz which is the basic clock frequency and uh, a factor of 2 will give you 50 megahertz. And therefore, uh, because of the board requirement we have changed this frequency for which instead of 3999 for 40 megahertz we need to just uh, update it to 499 that is all the change here. And naturally for uh, timing also we had to change this is for the 15 seconds timer always one count less as we had discussed before and uh, this one is uh, 0.1 second is the time base that is therefore, uh, the decimal point is reckoned here. So, it is actually 15 uh, for 14.9 means uh, 15 because this is one count less 0 1 2 3 uh, is the count that is the reason why one less and so is the case for the 5 seconds 4.9 uh, here and uh, similarly for the side road you need uh, 10 seconds. So, it is 9.9 .9 and uh, you need uh, for uh, 0 through 9 it goes for the as far as the basic time base is concerned which gives a 0.1 second delay and uh, that is here and for which we need uh, uh, instead of 10 9 actually 1 less. So, this will give you 0.1 second delay. So, these are all the declarations here for example, uh, left turn and uh, or uh, extra here and pedestrian main similarly uh, pedestrian side and similarly all left are all extra here and pedestrian uh, signal here then blink happens to be the very same thing and uh, once again we have uh, IO declarations and uh, so once again you see this uh, left output and pedestrian main and then once again uh, left for the side then pedestrian crossing outputs. And uh, essentially the wire happens to be the same thing and uh, then for timer and once again here we had to declare registers and uh, this uh, this pedestrian main and uh, once again left side turn as well as pedestrian they have got to be declared as reg. This is essentially the same this is to create a 0 0.1 second uh, time base and uh, this codes are exactly the same. You cannot take it left it is a field of views like that. Now, you can see the first uh, ok. So, the first character is not, uh, although it is appearing on the monitor it is not appearing there on the screen uh, I hope it is visible on the uh, TV. And anyway, we, we are not uh, really interested in the actual thing because we have already covered this codes. So, uh, we need not really worry about that. Uh, I am not going to describe the code and uh, these are all exactly the same thing only the difference I am pointing out. For example, 45 seconds it was and the comment is now for 15 seconds. This is the timer 2 uh, catering to yellow lights 5 seconds again once again there is no change here. this is for 5 seconds this is for 10 seconds here and this is for uh, 1 second for blinking and uh, so this is continuing with the same thing different counters are running which we have already seen so this is the initialized condition and uh, this also is same and uh, wherever the extra sequences are involved we will cover that. See the first one is also same and uh, 
So, you have seen here uh, pedestrian uh, is included here, side pedestrian can cross when the main switches I mean uh, lights are on, green lights and uh, we have turned PS 1 and PS 2 to 1 here and all other lights is exactly the same that we are going to see all through in each of the extra sequences that we have added and uh, for example, and we had to turn off unwanted uh, left signal here and that is what we are doing here. This is for 15 seconds timer and uh, notice that for hereafter every sequence you will be noticing that we have included uh, blink state and uh, so that we do not have to wait till the um, end of all the sequences which we had done before and uh, in this case we are uh, taking at uh, every sequence uh, S naught S 1 all sequences we are uh, sensing the blink. And once again you can see this uh, pedestrian uh, not wanted here therefore, that turned off here. Then uh, main pedestrian is also turned off here. That was for two sequences S naught and S 1 and uh, this is S 2 sequence and uh, once again blink control is taken into account. If blink is 1, then naturally it will go to the last state S 12 state which happens to be the blink state and uh, this is what we have already encountered uh, earlier also in the other two sequences. And uh, in this particular sequence, uh, we have one MLT 1 coming into picture as well as uh, MRT 1. And naturally, we need to switch off all other uh, unwanted lights and uh, including MLT 2 here and uh, uh, main pedestrian crossing and uh, again uh, SLT 1, SLT 2 left traffic of the side road as well as the uh, pedestrian uh, crossing for side road. So, once again for S 3 we have a blink control here and uh, once uh, the lights are different here. Once again you can see left flow for the main are all switched off here including the pedestrian crossing and uh, the side road uh, left also are all off here and uh, so is the case with uh, pedestrian crossing here. So, uh, this is S 4 state and uh, if you look if you want to recollect what that S 4 is you can just have a, this is a right flow uh, traffic from the side uh, uh, main road itself. So, you can see uh, right is allowed here uh, right as well as left flow from the second uh, uh, the main road and uh, all other li lights are off here and uh, you can see this left side as well as pedestrian uh, signals are all off here. So, S 5 state here is uh, the just yellow transition in the same manner. So, you can see the yellow being on here and all others are off and including MLT uh, and uh, SL uh, PM then SLT as well as pedestrian uh, crossing. Next state is S 6 here once again blink taken into account this is a S 6 state and uh, here what is uh, available is S 6 is the um, uh, side uh, uh, main tra uh, traffic flow and uh, there is a, a PM here uh, and uh, naturally S G 1, S G 2 uh, only are alive there in that. 
So, you can see S G 1 S G 2 and uh, P m is also there, all others are off. The side main traffic yellow lights are shown here as S 7 sequence and uh, the corresponding code here is um, MR 1, MR 2, 1 then uh, side 1, 1 each and all other lights are off. So, next sequence is S 8 once again blink is taken into account and uh, in this case you can see that uh, all reds and um, side right as well as left traffic is on here that is uh, so you can see this and next is yellow and then followed by um, this side S turn is this uh, this side from the top. S9 once again blink is there and uh, we have seen this and uh, both uh, main red as well as side red is on and uh, so also uh, the side yellow and uh, in all other lights are off and in uh, this is S10 sequence once again blink is taken into account and in this case. Uh, uh, main road red as well as side road red are all one as well as uh, right and left are on here. So, we can just have a look at this. So, you can see this 10 uh, right as well as uh, right as well as left on and all other uh, red and this turns into yellow here m y 1 m i uh, m y 2 and then uh, red there for S 11 sequence. S 11 is here once again blink is taken into account then uh, here you have uh, m y 1, m i 2, 1 uh, side road uh, red here and uh, side yellow one is this correct? This is for S 10 sequence. Uh, S 11 sorry S 11 I just have a S 11 is M y 1 M i 2 and S r 1 S r 2. M y 1 M i 2 S r 1 S r 2 and uh, I think some problem is there in this S y 1 S y 2 should be 0 actually is it not? This is for S 11 case. I think this should must this must be 0 right S 11 is it not? So, we will just correct this here this is 0 this is also 0. Okay, uh, next one is we will just go through this and all other lights are off. This S 12 is the blink uh, state and uh, we check the blink also here and uh, we switch off all lamps except for the uh, yellow uh, lights which is going to blink and that is covered only here. So, this is precisely same as we had a uh, side state earlier in, uh, in the earlier design and uh, uh, this is also exactly the same thing. We are inverting the S y uh, all yellow lights condition, so that it keeps on toggling this is happening every one second. 
I mean every 0.5 second. Uh, so, you have a uh, 1 second uh, time period or uh, 1 hertz and uh, that is for all yellow which you can see from the uh, power point here. So, you can see this uh, here. So, in addition to this uh, what we have is um, uh, we uh, will have an uh, assignment for you and uh, this assignment is uh, what we have done is uh, uh, these are all uh, I mean uh, timings are all programmed for the main uh, um, side road uh, traffic as well as yellow lights. What you do is you take this um, uh, switches are there SW7 and SW8 they are all BCD switches you can uh, program right up to 99. So, you use this as input for the timing and um, you have only one uh, two digit setting and in uh, each time you want to set for uh, main uh, traffic uh, delay you can use uh, two more jumpers here for I mean uh, in the SW1 switch the last two bits you allocate for selecting which of the three timers that you are going to select. So, 0 0 let us say uh, you select the first uh, main timing and uh, 0 1 for the uh, side timing and uh, 1 0 for the um, uh, yellow timing and uh, 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 corresponding timing also you have to set in this uh, BCD switch and uh, you can just uh, whenever you want to um, put this uh, I mean enter this just press uh, push button 2. So, this is the assignment for you. So, that um, a cop can change right on the field and thank you.